<laughs> hey there, good evening everyone and welcome back to Revolutionary Health. Revolutionary Health is a program of the Counter Narrative Project and the mission of the Counter Narrative Project is to build power among black gay men and to work in the coalition and solidarity with all movements committed to racial and social justice. You can find us online, we're everywhere. Um, you can find us on Twitter at Building Desire. You can find us on Facebook at Counter Narrative Project and on Instagram at The Counter Narrative. So you're joining us here on YouTube. I hope that you've hit the, describe, the subscribe button. If you haven't, go ahead and hit that button now, as well as hit the thumbs up button and let us know how much you love the video. And go ahead and share it with your friends. Let them know that you are joining us. So. My name is Johnny Cornegay. I have the pleasure of being the mobilization director for the Counter Narrative Project, and I'm joined with <laughs> Anthony Antoine. Hey, who are you, Anthony? I'm Anthony Antoine. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. <laughs> oh, wow. Google no, Anthony, Anthony Antoine, an activist freak, an artist, and activist, and living my life. Yes. <laughs> I'm Daddy Rod. Also, my DJ name is DJ Rodney Love. Leatherman, I'm a sex advocate. BDSM. Just, I thought you were, yeah. BDSM and yes. all of that good stuff. <laughs> Google it. Yes. <laughs> DaddyRod.com. Yes. I'm David Malbranch. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, David yeah. Malbranch. Hey, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I don't have anything catch you. you no, know, can nothing oh, catch you today? Right. Right. Quick queen quips today. I don't, <laughs> know. I don't have anything to Nothing for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you can Google. You can Google. All of us. Yes, yes, right. For real. Um, so today, y'all, is going to be an incredibly special conversation. Before I tell you what it is, because I know you already know what it is. But go ahead and you can chat with us. So there's a little chat box, which is right there on your screen. Go ahead and click the chat button. Interact with us, ask us questions. We will do the best that we can to get to all of the questions this evening. But we are talking about something incredibly special tonight. So um, we titled this House Music is Freedom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and okay, so there's a particular reason why I picked that as like a title. So story time. Um, I moved to Atlanta in 2010, wanted to leave, not, I hated my job. It was like, it was like a whole thing at that moment, right? It, my job later got better. But anyway, showed up at this party called Tambor, um, and one particular night, Osin Lade was DJ. You want to explain to people? Yeah, who was Osin Lade? Lade? Yes! Um, amazing producer, um, artist. Uh, in fact, um, you have heard um, Jay Z and Beyonce. I'm sorry, Jay Z and Beyonce on a DJ Khaled cut actually sampled um, Dion, which was an Osa mm -hmm. Lade so, cut. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go and check. I think I can't remember the name of the song now. Google yeah. yeah, so Google it. So at the party um, and was just dancing, and there was one moment where he was playing this track called Thrill Her, which was just like by this artist named Jack Sun. Mm -hmm. It was just like a Thriller remix, but it was crazy. Mm -hmm. Somewhere like halfway through, he smashed in controversy by Prince. Come on now. Yeah. No one saw it coming, but the room Went up. physically lifted. Yes, right? yes. Where everybody in the room yes. was like somewhere else. Yes. A spiritual. Route. Yes. Yeah. So we call this House Music is Freedom because house music was where, and on the dance floor in particular, was where I learned how to just be. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And just be and not give a day. So that's where I want to start. So my question for us as we jump into this dialogue, when did you fall in love with house? Wow, when did I fall in love with that? That sounds like brown sugar. It does. Yeah. When did you fall in love with We could do a whole movie on we that. We really like, could. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, let's just take a step back and just even honor that, like, music, house music is, like, for us, by us. Right. So it was like, you know, even if it, it was really performed in black gay clubs, mm -hmm. and even if the DJs, many of them were black and gay, but even if they weren't, they were likely gay, a few straight ones that pop yeah. through, but it was still it's music for us, right. by us. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this is like the backdrop. This is the soundtrack 
for many of us, especially at my age, mm -hmm. is the soundtrack of our coming out. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and, and why I love that you titled it House Music is Freedom, for many of us, we didn't get to have that freedom until we made it to the club and until we got to hear house music. Right, right. And then for me, it would be Loretta's. Mm -hmm. You know, so I made it to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, there was a few time periods before that, but when I was immersed and fell in love with house, it would have to be like 1995 here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. There was the Loretta scene. And the thing about Loretta's, and we talked a little bit about this, like there's a point in which if you're in immersed in house music, where you hit a zone and it's, it's something else. <laughs> yeah. right. it's, it's not just it, yeah. it's not just music anymore. You, you're it's not just realm. in the place that you're in. Yeah, you're someplace else. else. And for me, it would be like 1995 Loretta's. And then for me, it was also, which was a little bit controversial at times, but mm -hmm. people didn't like when they would mix gospel music with house. Oh, I love oh, a gospel yeah. house. Yeah. 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 But keep in mind, there were some people who were like, I don't know if we should be doing this. No, yes. I went in. Yeah. And so when you and gave house. me some gospel with a house beat, yeah. oh, it was. And the kids who were at the house club that night were actually on their way to church. Church, church. church. Right. Right. And we, right. so and that was a, so but keep in mind, transition. Yeah. but that was part of the dialogue. There were right, some people right. who were like, oh, I don't know if we should be doing this. Right. Now when we reflect back on it, we understand what that meant. Right. Yeah. But at the time, there was dialogue around right. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, I I try to learn the history of house music yeah. first. So I think we get we can all agree the house kind of got its birth from disco. Mm -hmm. Then from disco it migrated to the gay clubs yeah. in Detroit, Chicago, where it kind of got into the electronica mm -hmm. to a degree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for me, how I got into house, and I'm going off when I'm from the Bay Area, um, for me it was more of a healing. Mm -hmm. I only say that because we can I, we're of all of age where we know when the mid eighties was when the AIDS epidemic really started mm -hmm. to hit. Uh -huh. So start me starting going to the black gay prides in the late eighties to early nineties. Oh, wow. I would go to the clubs to hear the house music. Mm -hmm. And again, it was like the freedom. Cause again, yes. I was like, Oh my yes. God, I'm hearing this music. It was, it was uplifting. It was about love. It was about being yourself. But it was also in the fact of healing in a way, because at that time yes. when so many of our brothers and sisters were dying, yes. We didn't know if we were going to see them again at the next right. Pride event. Right. Yes. yes. So yeah. coming yeah. back to another Pride, if you saw them, it was a blessing. Yes. 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 But if not, if you had the right house music song, you was like in church because you would think about them or others you probably need to know. But God, you hated seeing them leave. Yeah. So for me, it was like the late '80s, early '90s. And everything's in timing because that was also the time when it actually became somewhat mainstream. It was a yeah, it was a yeah. very so house was really just like ooh. yeah, and that's how I got into. That's when we met when I was at Tuskegee. Right. He was at Emory. Right. That's crazy. And God, we've known each other that long. Yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's it's that's let's, that's what is that's what it means for me. Yeah, okay. yeah. For me, I think it started in um, in college, and I was I used to DJ radio and clubs at, at Princeton in New Jersey, mm -hmm. and um, we had a group that went around, there were four of us. Uh, we ended up calling ourselves um, FOPO DJs, F-O-P-O. Okay. Because we say FOPO -po 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 DJs. DJs. <laughs> right, so that's FOPO, we just started. And shout out to um, Mark Coleman, uh, who's from Willingboro, New Jersey. One of my dearest friends from a long time ago. He's one of the best DJs I've ever heard in my life, mm -hmm. as far as house music, hip hop, anything Mark could do fucking nice. anything on a turntable. But I remember 1989, like taking the Princeton Junction train um, and going to New York City, nice. taking it to from Princeton Junction to Princeton stop and then taking it to New York City and going to tracks mm. um, during the middle of the week, I think it was Tuesday nights or in Wednesday Bronx, nights. Right? It was free, huh? In the Bronx, right? No, 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 it was right in Manhattan. And it was free, oh. it was free. Oh, was nice. uh, Bronx had like the warehouse, the warehouse and there was also the warehouse, octagon, octagon and clubs like that. But like yeah. tracks was it for me and then there was also a place called um, Potato. Brighter Days, Two Potato Two was potato. a little club. Mm -hmm. So like there were a lot of these places in there, but I remember going to tracks and I remember I, and we've talked about this before, I think even on this show, like my first experience was going up on the floor and I was so amazed to seeing like all these black gay men at the club. 
Then looking down, I remember the song was playing was Elise, uh, Alicia Myers. I want to yes. thank you. Baby. And it was like church over there. But yeah. we literally got into the house uh, tone of this in the late 80s to early 90s. Mm -hmm. But it came from me when I started at Michigan State University. I used to drive from East Lansing, Michigan to Detroit and go to the nightclub Heavens. Mm -hmm. And there was a yeah. DJ over there named Ken Collier who was so ridiculous and i remember frankie knuckles was big at the time so the song oh, workout was yes, big yes. and i remember like you used to just go there you weren't trying to drink or hit on every, anybody it wasn't trying, trying to pick to up anybody yeah. but literally <laughs> everybody was just dancing like, and yeah. it was like it was such it was a, a different atmosphere. yeah it was such a different yeah. feeling back then and yeah. the djs were just so amazing and it is one of those things where like if you if you do dj um it's really an art form and like it nowadays is. like they control the pitch and so yeah. you just have to press a couple buttons and then you can mix songs Something in. Yeah. But like back then you had the pitch controls by oh, by. Yeah. So you had to like manually <laughs> figure the shit out. And you knew if you hit a mix and you could bring something in on the low and then yes, the whole yes. crowd would go up. Or if you hit a mix and it sounded like horses galloping. And so it was all that like wrapped into one whole experience. But it was like organic. It was awful. it was spiritual. It was church. Like and you could be on the dance floor. And I know you can attest to this, Johnny. Like you could be dancing by yourself. Like people Baby. think that people think that kids nowadays just started like dancing by themselves. But like oh, back then no, you could go absolutely. to a house music club and just sit there and get in your own zone and literally like it almost there would be sometimes when I'd be dancing, my eyes would feel like they'd roll in the back of my yeah. head. Like yeah, yeah. I'd lose track of where yes. I was if the song was right, if the zone. mood was right, You're if everything zone. was right there. So it was You're really like a healing thing. Yeah. Back yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. I want to bring in a comment. So Jarrell says, um, hello, brothers. Looking forward to another great episode. Hey, hey Jarrell. Thank you so much for joining us. And once again, please use the chat box any questions or comments when when did you fall in love with house what was your first experience um with house we want to hear from you and bring that into the conversation and make sure that you go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button so okay feeling so everything that we just described is like the feeling um when i think about today and where we are today why is how so, why do we need music experiences like what we just talked about today? I think there's a way we just have to continue to tell our stories and that there's a history that if we, you know, I'm a little older. And so now, you know, there are a lot of people, I, I love, you know, television shows like Pose mm -hmm. that does give a, a little context for um, some of the music and some generation. of the, yeah, for the new generation mm -hmm. to catch up to like mm -hmm. what happened in the late 80s, yes. early 90s. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a way we have to continue to tell our stories. It's really important. And and, and the way we all just got excited about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there, there was a way in which that just meant so much to our history. Yeah. So we have to continue. To yeah, do and that. I think you were just talking. I just thought about it. Like I had a tough time at Michigan State when I started in medical school and I almost failed out after my first year. And I remember um, the remix for Brighter Days. Mm -hmm. like, oh, yes, yes. Cashmere was yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and for those of you that are listening, but you got to look these songs up. Cashmere, Google, right. And it's, it's um, I, I think it's, is it the Underground Goodies mix? Or it was, it was, it was some kind of mix, it but dub mix. it was a dub mix, <laughs> but it, it's called Brighter Days. Yes. And I can't tell you Goodness. the amount of times <laughs> I would be on my bicycle or driving in my car and listen to that song because it was so uplifting. And it was, I mean, obviously the derivative was from house or, or from church music mm -hmm. um, and from gospel. And the singers were very gospel. If you think about like those guys, like, and so I, I think about the songs and how they lifted me up. And like during times where I was really absolutely like having a tough time, like house music always brought, brought me, me through, through it. Through it brought me out of that phone. Mine would be inner city um, good life. Good life. Hey, good life. Like good life got, got me through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gary Detroit, Kevin yeah. Saunderson, yeah. shout out. Mm -hmm. But you got to also remember too, everything's in timing. Because that was yeah. also the time of the 90s when it became mainstream. Right. Mm -hmm. So like. We can all remember Mariah Carey. Yeah. yeah. She George. would literally have her Amazing. House, house, house And then her remixes and would be go ridiculous. Back into the studio right, yeah. right, right, house right. Mix where the kids would literally fall to the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yet it was it was just uplifting or I mean it was just like what? 
Yeah, yeah I remember, I remember one of the best remixes I've ever heard was uh, oh. Fantasy was oh off the chain. Fantasy was just like But yeah. actually, you remember the song by Janet Jackson and Luther Vandross. They yeah, did the best thing. Like, 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 David Morales yes, he did, did a remix for that. that. And I remember hearing that in the Sound Factory yeah. bar. But, mm-hmm. but, and when I t- he just kept looping the beginning. We can break on like. But the best remixes. Wait, no, we can break on like. And the crowd would just be lifted up, up. And then when he started to bring the beat in, like, everybody would just explode and go crazy. We're going to start pulling out Trump okay, cards. Because so, I know you got one and I got one. Go ahead. Well, like, no, go ahead. I, I want to bring in a historic okay. thing. There's someone in this room who has a connection to the music video for that. Am I right about that? Do, Alvin, did you? Video. Yeah. See, okay, so yeah, there's a lot of history video. in this room. The best things in life are free videos. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Alvin, 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 yeah, it's history. Yeah. Our producer, Alvin. <laughs> I'm not on camera. <laughs> 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 this would be the post log. Yes, I mean, yes. For the video that, that didn't have Janet or Luther inside of it because they weren't available. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, like right. a perfect example of good songs that good hit a very yes. with Sade's remixes. Okay. They were very yeah. underground. Very, yes. Yes. But like haunt me. Mm-hmm. And what was that other one from Sade? That woman one? from Samaya. Woman. Yeah. Pearl. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God! Yes. 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 I, I had that. I had that. Was classic. I have that on vinyl. And then right. for us, I'm not Chicago. I'm not from Chicago. Yeah. But um, Shantae Savage. Absolutely. Yeah. Remember yeah. it for the longest time. <laughs> I want that record from you. I know. And it would never I lend it to me. me. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, Bitch will Never Find Me. Bitch will Never Find Me. Shantae Savage. And I was like, give me that damn mixtape. I still have it. I find it. Thank you. For the internet, I was able to You can find it on YouTube. Because he would never get it to me. You have it on vinyl now? Uh-huh. Okay. I did. So, what, well, my no. trump card. Go ahead. For, and we talked about like when house music went mainstream, and you know there are DJs that would be like, no, that's not real house. Oh, but like, yeah, and, yeah. and similar to the first episode of Pose this season, it was like, oh, Madonna's doing like, oh, so, so, oh my oh, God, they're yeah. finally going to care about us, and there's a whole like yeah, we can yeah. grab with that. that. But yeah. mine was um, Diana Ross's remix CD. Like it was Frankie Knuckles. It oh, was yeah. Um, yeah. that CD. Like it was only like seven songs. She did a remix CD in 1994, and like the best of DJs remixed her tracks. And I was like, House has like hit it. House has arrived. Like it's mainstream, and that CD is the business still to this day. The best one. God rest her soul. She just passed away a few months ago. Kim English. Kim English. Oh, Kim English. She did just recently. Absolutely. Oh, yes, my gosh. absolutely. That was yes. 95. Oh, yes. yes. So oh. the fi- the energy in this room is so high. <laughs> and I'm going to bring in some comments. Yeah. Um, thank you all for, first of all, joining us. I'm going to look at the camera, but I want to read some of the comments. So I'm going to start with um, Houseman202, who said, I got saved again. That's Tracks, true. summer 1994, Bishop Cedric Minister, yes, of sir. Yes, Mike sir. Yes, sir. You got <laughs> um, Jarrell said it was my junior year of college and I heard a mix with Brandy. Um, let me see. And it was a full moon track. Um, it allowed me to have a new beat and a new attitude. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for that, Jarrell. Mm-hmm. Caleb said my father would play Ten City yes. and other Chicago yes. house yeah. music when I was growing up. Um, Morgan ML3, thank you so much for joining. In 1991, I was 11 years old. And they were playing house music yeah, late nights on the radio in Los yeah. Angeles. Yeah. I loved it, but didn't know anything about it. We're going to talk about that in a second because there was a sea change. We're going to talk about oh, what yeah. that meant yeah. for our community. Yeah. Um, and the last comment, um, Jarrell again um, has a question. Um, do you feel that my generation, millennials, could grow to appreciate or value house music today? I feel that years ago it served more value um, for the children rather than today. So. I'm going to pose that question right. to the group. Do we feel like, and not just millennials, right? Like I'm thinking like Generation future, Z. like yeah, all of these yes, generations, like is that a possibility? Can they appreciate it? I think I think we know the possibility. Like we look at the TV show Pose, like do we know 10 years ago that there would be a show mm-hmm. about the 80s and early 90s right. that talked about our community that could be a hit show? Right. And we didn't see that, right. but now we have it. And so I think there's a way in which house music could be the same. Like, there's a history that comes behind it. And yeah, there's a way that the younger generation could appreciate it. But I think we cannot neglect the fact that 
venues which played a lot of house music are gone. Are gone. Oh, yeah. yeah. So let's, we we talked about Loretta. Mm -hmm. Remember Pearl Guard? Pearl yes, Garden. absolutely. Yeah. Those ratchet yeah. folks, even um, the Marquette. The Marquette. The Marquette. The Marquette is still around. The Marquette is still around. That was me. That was me. That was me. But I mean, it's different. Right, it's different. Yeah. Think about like New York. All the are going to New York. Yeah. Yeah. DC tracks the edge. Gone. Yeah. So those venues where we would congregate to hear yeah. that music is gone. And then at that time, you did have literally mainstream radio playing, playing house, house music, music right. on the radio. So Absolutely. you know, even in the Bay Area, we had a show called Yo Mama's House mm -hmm. from ten to three o'clock. Mm -hmm. so you house, your house, house, house. And see, house music, house music did become mainstream. And y'all remember CNC Music Factory? Yeah. So CNC Music Factory to oh, me yeah. mm -hmm. was very big in like bringing it to the mainstream. Absolutely. And I remember for me, Crystal like Water. one of Crystal the yeah, Water, one, one, Robin one, is. one yeah. of the things. Yeah, yeah Robin yeah. was phenomenal. One of the tracks that didn't get a lot of attention was Michael Jackson had a We're remix by CNC Music Factory yes. for you Black and White. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for Black and White, that was phenomenal, and it was nothing like the original song. And that was what was always wonderful about. It. That's why Mariah Carey was such a beast with it. Because right. you could take a song that you could listen to the regular version and be like, eh, it's okay. No. Somebody could remix the fuck out of that house absolutely. version and absolutely give you the life that Steve you need. Steve Silk Curly. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Jam like, so but Frankie yes. Knuckles' remix of Rock With You yes. with Michael Jackson. With that piano intro? Yes. yes. So I want to bring, I want to do two things right now. So uh, we have a lot of history oh in this room. God. So what y'all can't see um, is that Kevin Bryant is also in this room. Kevin Bryant is here, an amazing vocalist, house legend, all of that. I, um, <laughs> hearing from you, um, what does house music mean to you? And I know you're off camera, so I want you to speak up. Wanna we want to bring my camera? Come on, baby. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on, baby. Yes. We got to get him Come in. on, come. Yes. Special guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he was going in over there. Yeah. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> hey. But no. What house music means for me? Yes. It's interesting that you ask that because I started out in neo soul, R&B, and I was with all the other artists mm -hmm. singing background, and everybody always wanted me to do house music. Yeah. I didn't want to do it because I wasn't, I, I didn't understand it. And I'm from Jersey. Right. But when it right. came, when I came to the South, it was something totally different. So when I would see it, I was like, oh my God. So I would go to all these talent shows and stuff, and I was like, you need to do house music, you need to do house music. Loretta's you mentioned. Mm -hmm. oh. That was the first place that gave me a shot to sing. I was singing mm -hmm. army music in the, in the in clubs. The mm -hmm. And I did tracks. Tracks gave me my first mm -hmm. legs to stand on. So I just gave into it. It's the house music. And when I gave into it, I realized it made me sort of free. Yeah. Ooh! Yeah. Yeah. So Thank you so much. I doing house music. And I got signed to Strictly Rhythm yeah. in 96. Nice. And nice. my first record was Any Love. Shot yes. the remake. Yep. Come on. Hang out. So we're going to, I'm going to bring in some comments. Yeah. Um, Trey said, I discovered house when it went mainstream. So in the early yeah, 90s yeah, as a kid, yeah. I brought every Maxi single I could find because right. there were a ton of them. Yeah. Um, I first experienced it in the club, in tracks, my freshman year of college in 1999. Um, so my first experience, David, you talked about this a minute ago. Mm -hmm. It was in D.C. It was the Delta, the Delta Elite. It was like one in one entrance in and one entrance and out, I baby. Right <laughs> baby. And I went up in there and it was my first club. I walked in and it was just bodies and music and house and I didn't know what mm -hmm. to do. But what I did know is that I was different after. Yes. Right. yes. You know what I'm saying? I was really, really yeah. different yes. after. Yeah. So let's talk about the, let's talk, so this is revolutionary health. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think of how this good house is good mental health for me. Music is my it's drug. Literally. Music is yeah. my drug. Literally. Um, let's talk about that a bit um, and, and unpack that. Like for me, like I said, I would have left Atlanta. You know, mm -hmm. I would have left Atlanta um, had I not found the house music community here and started going to some of the parties. Um, let's talk about why music is so important and um, this particular music, why it's so important for our health and our mental health. Well, I think we're all like, you know, before you get to that place, you, you dream of a place of acceptance and finding your people. Mm -hmm. And that's what house music meant to me. So it, it helped to solidify like me staying around mm. to, to get to, 
you know, a world where revolutionary health exists mm -hmm. and I can right. find my community. Mm -hmm. That's what house music was for me. It was a part of the journey to say, hold on, it's okay, it's gonna be all right. right. You're gonna get there, you're gonna find your people. Right. And to piggyback off him, for me, I, again, I got into it, I started listening to it in the late 80s, but it impacted me in the early 90s when I had Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. Now, anyone know about Tuskegee? It's in the sticks of Alabama. Mm -hmm. I moved there from California, didn't have any friends or anything. I was going through a lot of depression and I attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing a house music song on AH, Alabama State's radio station. Mm -hmm. I forgot what the song was, but it was very uplifting. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is it. Hold it on. literally Hold changed on. me. Yeah. And that's how I got hooked on house. So it was literally like my saving grace. Yeah, awesome. shout out to college radio stations. Oh my God, because, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you think about WCLK down here. And yeah, because I had a house music show on that. They, on that they play house music. That's what we did at yeah. Princeton. Like, we were at WPRB yeah. and we did a house music show. We did Quiet Storm. But I mean, to me, I think for Generation X, I don't know about baby boomers. Maybe it's disco with baby boomers. But yeah, like guy. for Generation X, house music soundtrack of our lives. Yeah, and since house comes from church music, mm -hmm. you think about the time period, like, AIDS was going on yes. and, and just hitting. You were thinking people were starting to finally get comfortable with the sexuality and yeah. inviting people into that space. I like using inviting in rather than yes. coming out. Yes, yes. That's inviting. That's why right. I, like, I like better, like John L. Moore kind of coined mm -hmm. that, saying instead of coming out someplace, you're inviting yeah. somebody into who you are. Yes. But like that was the whole revolution that was happening yeah. at that time. And I think house music, the reason why millennials, like Jarrell asked, can millennials get it? I think they can get it, but it was a moment in time. Yes. And so you can't yeah. always get it. And it's yeah. like when people talk about Outkast and Goody Mob mm -hmm. in Atlanta during a certain period of time. Yeah. If you weren't there you at a right. certain it's a time, perspective. It's a yeah. it, it, you can appreciate it, yeah. but it, it may not have the impact that it had for a lot of other people. Yeah. So like music does that because it's a culmination of a combination of, you know, space and time and generation and where you were and what you were going through at that yeah. time. So I just know for me, I was finishing college. I was coming into my own. I was starting medical school. I was fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. I almost failed. But if, if it wasn't for DJing and house music, it mm -hmm. wouldn't have brought me through. And so by the time I started to really get comfortable with myself as a person, by the mm -hmm. time I got out of probation and wasn't about ready to fail out of medical school and yeah. made it through, like, House music had like carried it through, and I could tell you specific songs where mm -hmm. I was, what I was doing, yep. mm -hmm. um, and how it kind of took me through. So I have, I have a lot to thank to house mm -hmm. music for. Yeah. It was literally the soundtrack of my life back yeah. then. Kevin, what about you? Like, <clears throat> why is you know, um, your feelings? Well, house music helped me identify who I am. Mm -hmm. Ooh, mm -hmm. and, and and because all the other genres, you know, you have to be this person, you have to be this character, you have to like be profiled yeah. house music allowed me to actually it forced me to dig deep within myself mm -hmm. and and be okay. mm -hmm. yeah. and that's how i did a record called you want to be well just be you know, yeah. Said earlier. yeah so it helped me do that so the the more that i delved into myself yeah. like through this through this music through mm -hmm. my songs mm -hmm. it helped me be more of me and that's how i became i am kevin bryant like i know yeah. who i am now you know, I think it's because of what Anthony said, like it's for us, by us. Yes, yeah. so it, it, So we felt that, like when we listened to it. Yeah. So when you listen to Devotion by Ten City, oh, you're you like, know, yeah. you know, like they, get it. To another, they like, get it. They get it, they understand, and they made this for us. So when you're listening to it, it's like, oh my God, this music's for me, and this can help me. And like Louis, 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 something else you mentioned lift the room lift yes i remember when i first got signed i went to new york and they said oh we're gonna put you in the studio and i was like okay i'm going to the studio and it was like oh i get lifted mm -hmm. yes and i'm like mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yes, yes, yes. and, and you literally felt like things were lifted yes. yeah. ah, <laughs> listen y'all like house music so important and i mean do definitely do some research there are so many um tracks and things that you're familiar with even when we Think of things that you experience in music today. Like there's house music just lives on in so much. There's great house music out there right now. Absolutely. absolutely. There is. Absolutely. And that's the thing to keep in mind too is the music is still there and being made. And there's great, there's always great but stuff. And it's morphed into so much. But so you know many who has more appreciation for it now is Europe. Yeah, like, yes, more they so really than anything, like Europe, like it South was Africa. Yeah, yes, yeah. South yeah. Africa. It was, yeah. it was Chicago and New York for Detroit. most of it and Detroit. Right. But 
and Chicago, Chicago, New York, and Detroit, and then all of a sudden it just kind of more and the global community yeah. has kind of started to more yeah. appreciate yeah, it yeah. as it kind of waned here and like. And then there's like there. house music in the park that's like traveling. Atlanta yeah. has a good community for that. Absolutely, yeah. Atlanta and then, is really good. Come to sold out next Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Thursday Very night, cool. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind. We are wrapping. Thank you all so much for joining for tonight's show. It went fast. I know, yeah. right? It, it blew so by. Fast. It's all yes. over already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so oh, much for all mix. of the comments. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh. Are there any essentials that we should like? Yes. Now, people who are interested in house music, like essential producers or artists. Okay. That Frankie Ooh. Knuckles recommend. is the godfather so, of house in... First signed and find his stuff. Byron like, Stingley. Yeah. Frankie, Frankie Knuckles. Frank, Byron Frankie Stingley. Knuckles. Byron Stingley. Byron Stingley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still C. Curly. Still, yes. of course. Okay, can we all Absolutely. acknowledge Louis Vega? Louis, Louis yeah, Vega. Louis oh, my gosh. Masters at work. Masters, Masters so at what, work. So here's Great. what we're going to do. So Counter Narrative Project, um, we have one playlist. Let's create a house music. Absolutely. It's Freedom playlist. Yeah. Can I and say get, real quick? Yeah. Okay, for those who know, I DJ. And yes. I actually have a, a, all like 12 we have a bunch remixes of yes. Yes. on my website, mixcloud.com mm-hmm. backslash DJ Rodney Love. Yep. Yes. You right. hear all kind of house music, gospel house, erotic house, yes. Yes. every kind of house. Since we're um, promoting, um, yes. okay. <laughs> look, my 12th CD, Masters of Dance, dedicated to Frankie Knuckles. There's yes, um, yes, the yes. online version that's my stuff, mm-hmm. and then there's a remix project that I give out for free on bandcampcamp.com. Mm-hmm. Anthony Antoine, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll put the, I'll put all of these in the comments, mm-hmm. Kevin. Same thing with me, Kevin Bryant. I am Kevin Bryant on everything. I have a new project coming out. Yes, I'm working on it now. Yeah. Right. And look for people in it. Yeah. Yes. Who has a beautiful rendition of um, Angie Stone's record. So yeah. just, yeah, look out for the new people. So much, so much happening. So what we're going to do is we'll make sure that we get a playlist together. Yes. I want to ask all of you, too, to contribute. So make sure that you get into the comments. Let us know what track should be in that playlist. But we'll go ahead and put that on our Spotify. We'll put it into the comments. So a um, couple of things that you need to do. Make sure you follow us on social media. Facebook, Counter Narrative Project. Instagram, The Counter Narrative. And... Twitter at Building Desire. Make sure that you hit the thumbs up button and go ahead and like this video. And make sure that you subscribe and share it. Um, And we will be back here next week. We're going to be having a conversation about prep and research. So make sure that you come back and join us. I want to bring in this one last comment because um, I'm seeing this come up and we haven't talked about this club. Jules Catch One Disco oh, yeah. is where LA. people yes, found sir. people LA. like me yes. during the hours that just wanted to dance. Yeah, that was the first time I took my shirt off and felt free in the club. Yes. House music yes. is freedom. Yes. I want to thank LA. all of y'all for being here. I want thank to thank you. all of you for joining us. Have a great, great evening. Thank Peace. you so much. Bye, y'all. Okay. <laughs>